So again, excited to launch D7-5810, which is our highest performing, D7 is the highest performing SSD swim lane that we have at Solidime. Um, the eight there stands for the high endurance swim lane uh, we are talk talking about, which is much higher than the standard medium endurance swim lane that you guys see typically, which is three dry rides per day or one dry ride per day. Um, so again, um, this drive right here, uh, one single form factor, we are launching 800 gig. We are in high volume manufacturing to, as of today. Uh, we have been in high volume manufacturing for past few months now with an additional capacity point coming out in, in Q1 of next year um, at 1.6 terabyte. Um, the drive is able to offer up to 50 drive rides per day. That's the random endurance that the drive can offer. Uh, with about 2x the better performance of our nearest competition, uh, um, out there. So the drive is built for two specific purposes, which is one is the driver high ride rides per day, typically uh, intended for ride caching, heavy uh, logging kind of algorithm or applications. And of course, in terms of the right performance, which is where the need of the R is, we are able to deliver 2x the performance of our nearest competition here. Again, offering all of this, uh, the storage class memory is typically where it is targeted for and typical storage class memories that you see out in the market, which are non-NAND technologies, are about, this is about 20% of the cost of those technologies right there. So we are able to offer that high endurance, higher write capabilities with about 20% of the cost of existing technologies out there. So really excited to introduce, this is an SLC-based uh, NAND media that we use here. Um, this, is, this is a ground up SLC media that we use here, so. Um, this kind of tells, um, we focus on endurance here in terms of the swim lanes that we have for, for our product line. So this product, of course, sits on the top of our swim line um, in, in terms of the endurance. So 50 dry rides per day right there. Let's see if I can get this going here. Yeah. 50 dry rides per day right here, uh, 50 or 10. Uh, all of these product lines right here, three dry rides per day, one dry ride per day, all are in high volume product, production for us. Um, and this kind of uh, introduces and expands our portfolio into that 50 dry rides per day swim lane. Um, of course, targeted for caching, high frequency trading kind of applications where you have high write pressure going to the drive uh, versus just the read. So again, combines really well with our QLC lines, which are more read intensive versus this is more of a write intensive kind of workload. And let's go into the next one. Um, more of the speeds and feeds of the product. This is built on a NAND media that we introduced back in 2021 with our TLC product line, so 144 layer 3D NAND. Uh, but again, this is SLC versus what we launched back then was TLC. And we have SSDs on 144 layer, which is QLC and TLC since about past two years now. So this is on a proven media technology out there. Uh, we are building SLC out of that now. Um, of course, this is a Gen 4 drive, two capacity points, starting with 800 for today, and then again, launching 1.6 um, availability in, in Q1 of next year. Um, I talked about endurance here. We are able to do 50 dry rides per day on a random workload, which is typically not the case in real life. Uh, you are probably going to see much more depending on what your workload profile looks like. Endurance, we are able to achieve, um, again, 73. We, we almost cross about 100 petabytes written sequentially. So it's a, it's a really high endurance drive in terms of what it can deliver. Uh, able to achieve all of this high performance. And again, I'm going to talk a little bit about the performance numbers at the bottom here. We are able to achieve all of this at 12 watt power envelope. That's the highest that the drive can achieve um, with the highest performing. Of course, keeping the Uber and the MTPF pretty standard for our drives in the data center environment, uh, which is two million hours and 10 raised to power 17 error bits. Um, let's focus a little bit on the random write performance of the drive. We are able to achieve almost 500K um, random write IOPS on the drive. Again, staying within 12 watts of power. Um, at the same time, if there is a workload profile that is about a mixed workload, we are still able to touch about 865K random read IOPS on the drive. Um, delivering sequential 6.4, 4 gigs per second, pretty standard for a Gen 4 drive. Again, um, the, again, the focus on the, the random part of the latencies here on the QD ones, 53 microseconds. Just to give you an idea, this is about, about half of what a typical TLC drive would achieve. So if we were to put a TLC drive in a, in a hot storage kind of um, tier, you're you're looking at about about 75 to 100 microseconds on the on the read latencies on the drive. Um, again, delivering that read latencies, and I have a graph that talks about if you put enough write pressure on the drive, what the read latencies profile look like on the drive itself. 
Um, so again, able to achieve all of this on this SLC media um, with again, 53 microseconds on, on the read per se. I talked about the form factor there. Um, one form factor, the most predominant form factor in the industry right now, you raw two. We'll, and we are open to other form factors as needed from our customers. Um, again, application-wise, anything that is right, right intensive, right caching, any kind of caching applications, data logging, metadata storage, any kind of mid-tier storage where you need the hot data, uh, quick response back to the host, uh, this is a well-suited drive for that. On the industry alignment on the specs, we are 1.3C compliant uh, with on the NVMe manageability interface 1.1. Pretty standard for the drives out there and pretty competitive to what the current offerings are. Any questions on the drive capabilities thus far? Uh, you're noticing U2 is the only form factor you're producing right now? That's right. So there won't be, there'll be M2 and then... Uh... Um, we are not looking to do that right now, but again, if there's a customer out there who is really looking for, U2 is the most predominant form factor. Um, with about like what 60 70 percent of the volume maybe even more mm -hmm. shipping into that okay right so um we are introducing this but with one that's the focus now okay yeah Perfect. and again we continue to watch the industry trend as the customers move over to edsff e3.s mm -hmm. if that becomes interesting and as it replaces euro 2 in the future but how does the capacity compare to some of the other drives in that space oh sure great question um so yeah of course let, let's look at Optane. Optane starts at about 4, 480 gig right now. Um, and again, this is the storage class memory. So storage class memory typically plays in the lower capacity, less than two terabyte kind of space, right? And that's why we are introducing this product line with like two capacity points that are most effective and more asked for, which is 800 and 1.6. So we are very much in line with what the storage, storage class, class memory looks like. Yeah. It's surprising to me the 144 layer 3D NAND SLC only supports 800 gigabytes of, of storage. Uh, th that's right. So yeah, it is a dense uh, dense drive in terms of, you know, um, we, we in fact use the same technology, uh, the same NAND technology to build our SLC, PLC, and QLC drives out of the same NAND technology. Right, right. So the same NAND die can be configured into three different modes in the factory for us. So again, building this on a proven technology that is already out there, industry tested in high volume deployment at our large customer base. And what's, uh, what's the endurance of something like storage class memory? Typically, you know, uh, depending on where you look at it, Optane is up in the high hundreds. But then again, a lot of the customer feedback that we have seen is a lot of the times the customer don't even get to that kind of endurance levels, right? So yes, the Optane can offer that kind of endurance. But again, how much of it getting utilized in real life is a bigger question, right? Even some of the performance specs, right? Um, the storage class memories might have a higher performance spec. Uh, but then again, how much of it is really getting utilized in a real world scenario is TBD. What's the over provisioning look like on this um, SLC storage then just to, you know, deliver this element of endurance? Uh, so, you know, uh, we fo so this is a natively SLC drive and we are able to achieve a lot of the endurance and uh, the performance on the drive just because we are an SLC drive, uh, SLC NAND at the, at the at the back end here. So we are able to achieve a lot of that by just doing that. And of course, just like any other SSD, there's a certain amount of uh, over provisioning that has to be there to achieve um, the regular uh, functionality of the drive. And just for curiosity, is this a charge strip or is it a floating gate? Uh, it's a floating gate. Okay. Yep, uh, this is still built on the Intel uh, 144 layer okay. uh, floating gate technology. Okay. Oh. Very interesting profile here. Let me explain what, what these two graphs are. Essentially, what, what this is, the bottom line here uh, is increasing the write pressure on the drive. So essentially, you're going all the way from 100 megabits per second all the way up to 1500, so 1 1.5 gigabits of throughput on the random write performance on a 4K. And on the, uh, the y-axis, you're actually reading the latencies, a QD1 latencies on the reads. So if there is an application out there which is actually doing reads at the same time at the writes are happening to the drive, um, this kind of shows you a, a, a profile of latency and how the latency goes uh, uh, from 53 to about 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 100 uh, on, on an SLC drive versus a typical TLC drive that you have out in the market, right? So you can clearly see there are two things that SLC stands out where it is what it is meant for, right? One is delivering high write bandwidth, but with an excellent responsiveness on the reads as well. But where if you were to put a TLC in a mid-storage tier, which is a 4, tier, four terabyte SL TLC drive, 
you saturate at about 600 plus you you get a really high read latency on the reads so again it's not that you can go replace a tlc on a hot tier and achieve a similar kind of performance on both the read latencies and the and the random writes here so this kind of shows you the average latency that we were able to achieve um, um, on, on this one. And then again, this talks about the high, high, high nine cost, the four nine cost for a similar profile. Um, so again, showing a stark difference between what the TLC drive can deliver to a, what a real SLC media can deliver, where there is a need for like excellent responsiveness on the reads, but at the same time delivering very high write pressure. Um, Quite an R chart, but again, uh, we, we compare the nearest competitions we have out there, the competitor A and the B. Of course, in the appendix, we call out the names there, but then again, uh, taking the competitor A as a baseline, um, we are able to achieve on the two most important matrix that matters the most for storage plus memory. And <laughs> outperforming the competition pretty handsomely, both on the random writes and the endurance. So again, up to 2x on the random writes and about 1.5x uh, on the endurance there. So essentially delivering at the at the places where it matters the most. Achieving all of that in the same power envelope as a competitor A delivers. Right. Um, again, when we when we design our products, there the, the are focus points, the priorities when we go design our products. And again, the focus for this particular product was how do you achieve the best in class random write performance plus the endurance, still keeping the power envelope to about 12 watts, which is very, which is an excellent profile for a Gen 4 drive. Um, so this is just comparing two of the alternatives that are available out there in the market, again, depending on what the needs are. What's the QT on the read-write? Oh, read. Um, so QD256 for the random reads and... Oh, QDEP. QDEPT. Oh, QD, okay, yeah. Oh, you were looking for the full form, okay. I'm yeah, sorry. the QDEPT, no, yeah. Oh, it's okay, I'm good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. I should have probably called it out somewhere. What is QD there? Okay. Lovely. You know, uh, let's deep dive into a little bit of use cases where how this particular drive can be utilized. Of course, this drive can be utilized as a standalone if you have an application out there which is a standalone logging application. You're using this as a boot drive, doing heavy writes to the drive. And of course, this drive is an excellent choice there, right? A low capacity for a boot drive with an excellent write performance with high endurance. So you can do multiple amounts of uh, writes over a period of five years for the life life of the drive. But of course, when you combine that with our existing solutions on the QLC side, in this scenario, we are combining that with our QLC, which is a 16K IU induction uh, drive. Uh, uh, between the application layer and the actual storage, which is a QLC here, this is where your, your SLC sits. Of course, that can be utilized as a metadata. You store the metadata on the SLC drive, which is the hot tier and the mapping goes back to the storage on, on, on the QLC media here. So essentially anything that is a hot data sits on a faster medium, uh, which is SLC in this scenario. And then again, your data actually is stored back in the, in the, in the, in the QLC, which is comparatively slower uh, than an SLC, but fast enough for some of the applications out there, right? Um, the second one is similar where we use SLC as a write cache. So, uh, some of these, you, you, you can view this as an L1, L2 cache in a, in a CPU pipeline, right? Where the hot data sits in L2, L3 cache. And again, majority of the data sits in your backend. So essentially you are reading from the right cache here instead of going back all to a slower media or a media um, which is relatively slower. And then again, reading it back to the application. At the application, at the same time, the application can of course have a direct access to the storage media here. So again, using this as a write buffer or a write cache in an application where hot data is required, right? Um, combining the second use case with some level of intelligent data placement, like like ZNS, for example, right? Where to 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 optimize the VAF for the for the whole capacity, like the storage tier, you're basically doing some level of intelligent data placement, like a zone zone namespace kind of thing, where you intelligently place the data either in the in the uh, SLC or in in the in the QLC here. So essentially optimizing the VAF that you can achieve both on the QLC as well as the SLC drives. Right. Okay. Is that a dual port drive? Uh, that's actually not a dual port drive. So we are just showcasing that this is an SLC drive right here that is talking to the application layer. Uh, this is just a QLC drive that is sitting um, in, in the tiered. 
No, I understand, but it's not a dual port drive. No, it is not. No, no, it's a single port drive. For this uh, data placement thing, do you provide some driver for this, or how will it be done in? Yeah, okay. exactly right. Uh, so we we have uh, what Kapil is going to talk about is a CSAL, which is a right shaping algorithm. Um, I'm going I'm going to touch a little bit in my next file here, but then again, he's going to get into the depth where you know it sits right across the application layer, which takes care of writing to the SLC, and then again, streaming data back to the, the storage medium here, QLC, in a sequential fashion. So you're optimizing the WAF on an SLC or a QLC media, and then again, um, managing um, the metadata or the data in the right cache here in an SLC. Um, I want to summarize, again, happy to launch this 50 year 10 with you guys here today. High endurance uh, for what it is required in, in this particular swim lane, the storage uh, class memory swim lane, uh, 50 drive rides per day, um, leading the competition there um, in terms of what they have to offer, um, delivering 2x the performance of what we have we have seen with the nearest competition there. Um, well suited for the applications again, caching, logging, tiering, hot data storage, all of all of this at about 20% of the cost that I was referring to for the storage class memory that exists today, right? That's the non NAND technology. Did you mention right amplification factor? Yeah. What is the right amplification factor? Um, so anytime you, you make a write to the SSD, essentially, um, you there is a certain amount of... I understand what it is. What is the factor for the device? Um, I think I would have to get back to you on that one. Um, what's the unit of indirection for the device? Uh, 4K. Or oh, five twelve too, both like five twelve and four K. Yeah. So again, delivering all of this, uh, the fifty eight dry rides per day plus two x of performance um, at about twenty percent of the non NAND technologies out there today. Question: Sure. Manufacturing for your solar and product is it overseas? It is overseas. Yes. Okay. For us. So, so supply chains are solid now. Everything's back in order. Yep. Everything. Yep. We haven't seen anything. 